So today we're going to attack the dreaded 7.3 oil dipstick tube leak. First off, uh, crawl underneath here. That up there on this truck is not leaking bad yet, but it is starting to sweat. So we're going to preventatively repair it so that it doesn't lose all the oil out of the dipstick hole and therefore shut the engine down. So the starter does have to be removed. So the first step always when removing the starter will be to disconnect both batteries, negative cables, so we do not have any sparks underneath the truck while performing the repair. We can now see the oil filter adapter and you can see better the leak that it has started to develop. In order to remove the dipstick tube, first remove the dipstick, that way you're not fighting it from down below. You will see down in here I have my socket already set up, 13 millimeter deep socket on a long enough extension so you don't have to stuff your hand way down in there. Simply remove the nut holding the dipstick tube down to the top of the valve cover. Unclip this little plastic wire support right there and unsnap this guy and pull that wire loom off. I don't know if you can see that real well. Pull that little plastic wire loom off, undo the nut, and the dipstick tube will pull right out. Once you get that o-ring seal broke loose from up top, you can pull the dipstick completely out of your way. O-ring seal broke loose at the bottom. All you have to do is get that up off of its lock bolt. And you can remove the dipstick tube from your way, out of your way, under the vehicle. As you can now see, the hole is empty. One thing you will want to make note of, I have a tool here that I've made that goes into the hole the dipstick tube came out of. You do not want to take this nut off without holding this with a tool. You do not want this to fall inside the oil pan. Then you will have to remove the cab, take the engine out of the truck in order to drop the oil pan, in order to recover the inner piece of this oil dipstick adapter. So the tool that I have made goes into that hole with a spring fit and once it's in that tube can no longer go in the hole but that cannot fall into the oil pan because you can hold it in place. The other thing you want to make note of on some models, there's two ears on this adapter. You want to know which way your dipstick tube is facing. This one is facing towards the front of the engine. Some of the trucks that is rotated and pointing up, straight up the side. So you want to make sure that you note which way it's going. That way when you're done with the repair, the dipstick goes in the same direction it did before you started, or you will not be able to put the dipstick back into the adapter. Just to show you, I pulled back the trans cooler lines a little bit to slip my channel locks underneath. It allows you to get the grip on it that you need to pull that nut free. Once the nut is free, get your channel locks out of the way. You'll see that unit fell inside the oil pan, just like I said it would. And the tool prevents it from being all lost. Slide the nut up and over the tool, and then pull the adapter back up into the hole. It's not ideal to have it fall in there, because as you can see, now it's covered in oil, but that'll be cleaned up before we finish putting the kit together. This is what I was speaking of as far as the little bird mouth notches go. See if I can get a better light for you. You can see that now the dipstick is pointing straight up, when in fact, on this specific truck, the dipstick needs to rotate forward 
and go in that notch. So that's an important alignment reminder when you put it back together. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is reach in here. Sometimes you can get it out with your fingers, sometimes you need a pick tool. But you need to remove the factory o-ring from behind the oil pan. That needs to come out and be thrown away. That will not be used when you put it back together. The reason this unit fails is because that o-ring gets oil on it, it swells up, and it pushes out the sealing surface in the back. So the o-ring will no longer be used behind this unit. Now we need to clean up the oil pan and the adapter, wipe it down really good, and get all the dirt and grease off of there. I have cleaned the oil pan all around where the adapter goes through to the outside. Uh, some guys like to spray brake clean here as they wipe it down. I am not a fan of spraying brake clean where it can go inside to the engine oil. So I simply saturate a rag with brake clean and wipe the whole surface down after I've scraped off the big junk that's stuck up there and any oil, wipe it down with a rag. Then I saturate a rag with brake clean and wipe the surface to prepare it for the installation of the repair. Here we have the oily original nut with the flange on it that holds the dipstick adapter together. This is the oversized now from oil saturation o-ring. Neither one of these parts are going back in the truck. So we'll put those over here on the side. Now what we're going to do is we will use some ultra black permatex. This is the stuff that I use that works the absolute best. You can pick it up at any auto parts retailer usually. I happen to have a mostly used tube I would be working from. But the Permatex Ultra Black. This is the O-ring that comes in the kit that you will be putting on the dipstick tube when you reinstall the dipstick tube. This is the new nut that takes the place of the old nut because there is no flange and there's not enough room on there when you put the washer on or the nut, the washer, and the gasket. Now the gasket, we will put a light coating of the RTV Ultra Black on the side that goes to the oil pan. Once that goes down and sits up nice and tight on the oil pan, we will be installing the washer over the top of that, threading the nut on, and setting the torque on the nut. It doesn't have to be on real tight, but it has to be on tight enough to not vibrate loose. I like to make sure some of the ultra black gets on the threads of the nut when it goes on. It'll work like a Loctite to keep it from vibrating loose after the silicone sets up. So there will be more of that underneath the truck. So here is the rubber gasket. We have smeared RTV ultra black all along the side that's going to go up against the oil pan. So you're going to want to feed this down your tool. All the way down. And set it into place over the adapter. Make sure it gets a good seal up on the pan. Line up the ears. install the washer on top of the gasket. Now again, make sure your dipstick is pointing in the direction it came out of the truck in, or you're going to have to redo the whole thing to get your dipstick to mount back to your engine. Now, you take the nut, slide the nut down, the tool, is now ready to come out. This does not move anymore. The silicone has squirted out around the outside of the gasket telling me that it's down there tight and the silicone is now going to do its job of sealing the gasket to the outside of the oil pan and inside around here should be sealed up just as well with the silicone squirting. So now the tool comes out. 
little bit of pressure, but you can remove the tool from the dipstick hole. Slide the O-ring up the dipstick, get it in its little groove. Insert the dipstick back into the hole. You might have to go up top, wiggle it so that it gets free of all the stuff it's leaning on, and then make sure it gets in past the O-ring, or you'll have a leak at the O-ring. Once it gets in the spot, wiggle it till it comes down. We will go up top, reset it on the stud. From up top. You need to take the dipstick, push it down, and get that back on the stud where it belongs. Once you get dipstick tube back on its nut, hook back up the one electrical connector on the back that you took off. Put the plastic part, hold it on there, back in, and then we will put the nut back down here. The electrical connectors are put back in. Insert the dipstick back into the dipstick tube. We'll go underneath, put the starter back in, hook the battery cables up, test for leaks. Seal is in. We'll take the starter here back off of the leaf spring where I've had it hanging during the repair. Install it back in its hole. Tighten up the three bolts with a 17 millimeter socket and go back up and put on the, uh, put on the battery cables. Get your battery cables.